Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text comes from the gospel message read to you just a moment ago. <clears throat> Luke chapter 12, verses 35 and, stay, and following. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning and be like men who are waiting for the master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door when he, to him at once. And when he comes and knocks. Blessed are the servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at the table. And he will come and serve them. Brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, if you join our church or you have in the last year, I have a bit of a policy. I try to have you just come to church regularly, just kind of get into the life of the church. And then after a year or so, I might ask or suggest or question, you know, what gifts have God given you that might be useful for the church? What would you like to do? How do you see yourself doing something? Sometimes people, I can get the feeling as soon as I start the conversation, we got to give it a few more months. I understand. And maybe some of all, you and all of us, no matter how long we've been in church, maybe could be asking our question this, what gifts do I have today that maybe have changed? Maybe there's something else for me to do. We Lutherans teach something that you might think uh, we are when we're not. What I mean by this is sometimes uh, we are accused of being Lazy Christians. I don't know where it comes from. I think the reason why they think that is because we, we believe and teach that you're saved by faith apart from works. No matter what you do, none of that's getting you into heaven. You're already in. You already, your name's there. Just like this child today has been written in the book of life. And so you do not have to do anything at all. But that is not the end and it is not even our teachings. We respond to the gospel. And we see the needs of others. And because God himself has opened up our hearts, we now see that as well. We're no longer employees with this on our biography. NMJ. Not my job. We are the people with these letters. ISO. I serve others. That's who we are. Not because of the fear of damnation. There's no fear to be had. It's because our Lord has saved us. And then when we look to the cross, we find work to do for others. And all that work is to care for the health, the well-being, and the eternal soul of others. The LWML falls into that category. The word missions is in there, after all. These ladies work very hard. And I can say with certainty, none of them are seeking a thank you. In fact, uh, Cinda said it best the other day, and I think I agree with her. If you want to say thank you, just volunteer to do a little bit of work with us. That would be the best thank you of all. Can you sit around and watch others work around you? I'm not letting my wife answer that question because I know what she would say. On Thanksgiving, the whole family was together as it was, and all the women were in the uh, kitchen preparing, setting up, and talking. Very normal situation. And then one of the ladies said, you know what? You got this covered. I'm going to go in with the men, have a beer, and watch the football game. I'm sure that'll be okay, right? Or how about after Thanksgiving? One of the cars won't start in the parking lot and all the men gather around the hoods up and they're scratching their heads and they're trying to figure it out and kind of bouncing forth ideas of what's wrong with this car. And yes, half the men out there will be faking it. They have no idea what they're talking about. But they've got to put their head under the hood because that's the way it goes. And one of the men decided, says, you know, look, I know nothing about cars, steps into the car, turns on the radio, and just sits there and listens to the radio as the men fix it. That'll be okay, right? One caveat. If there's a male chef in your family, he should be helping in the kitchen. And if there's a female mechanic, listen to her. 
No, I don't think sitting around watching others is what's in our DNA, at least. In our text today, Jesus tells us something very unique. Not only that we're going to serve, but if you caught it, the master's going to come home, he's going to get dressed, and he's going to serve them. Our Lord has come in this earth to serve humanity. The shocking thing, God who we worship serves humanity. He did it on the cross, in fact. It is Jesus who has taught us to love our neighbors, to love them, to care for them. That is how our faith will be working out. Faith without works is dead. I did not make that up. It comes out of James, to be honest with you. So we believe in the Word of God, and we do. And James tells us faith without works is dead. That's what it is. But mind you, remember what I said at the beginning. You're saved. Christ loves you. So what motivates you to work then if it's not the fear of damnation? It is the response to what Christ has done for you on the cross. Jesus serves us on the cross. There he worked. His work is set there, seen there and felt. There we find hope. There is where Christ is seen the most clearest. The heart of our Lord is seen there. Now we see on the cross and afterwards we brought to that faith to the waters of holy baptism. We are told the message of God's love over and over again and we respond in powerful and big ways and little mite box ways, but we do respond I actually try to look up online how much money in the history of the LWML they have raised. And that number might be out there online, but I didn't find it easily. I can't say I spent hours looking, but it didn't come up quick. The best I got was in 1987 was the first year they budgeted over a million dollars for giving. In 87, mind you. Now, I could find lots of ministries that they enjoyed uh, sponsoring funding, and being part of. That, the lists are long, but the money, that's just there to create the list of the work of the church. And it is impressive. These servants of Jesus have spent a lot of time counting pennies, making quilts, cooking meals, being there for our missionaries and our mission work. And they don't look around wondering, where's the thank you? They're servants of Christ, just like all of us are. With, they do it with joy for the work, just like all of us do. And we can say the same thing here at peace, can we not? The same thing can be said about you guys, that you do the work of the Lord, not expecting a thank you, but because you follow the Master and you enjoy and love others. Of all the Christian groups in the world, the, for Lutherans, there's a word I like to use, and it's vocation. It's a good word, vocation. You should pick it up a little bit more. It's simply put, is the things that God has given you to do and how to live in your life. We don't count the cost. We don't pine for stuff and vocations we don't have. We just serve the Lord. Jackie, I'm going to talk to you. You're going to step in, and you're going to represent all of mothers right now. That's a lot on the shoulders. I know. If you're wrong, the other mothers will tell you afterwards. Okay. Be gentle on her. She is a newborn. I have read that a mother will lose three months of leisure time when she has children. So most mothers give about 760 plus hours extra of your life just to your child. Have you even thought about that? I've done more. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> the women agree with you. I bet it is too, actually. Would you give up your children for 760 hours of leisure a year? No. Hmm. Why not? They add to it. Yeah. <laughs> Who gave you these children? Are they a burden or a blessing? Most of the time a blessing. Yeah. 
they'll get there at 25. Yes. The, 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 what I bring into this is that's your vocation. A lot of women in here are vocation. And we could sit there and go what it isn't or sit there and go it is joy and there's no thank you, there's no parade, there's no nothing. It's just the vocation that mothers have, wives have, grandmothers have, great-grandmothers have, whatever it is. And these vocations are great and small, elder, acolyte, reader, pastor, father, member of the church, and that is just who we are. And we're not bifurcating out and saying, well, look at how good my life would be if we didn't do these things. Luther is actually quite great on this. I love this the way he analogized it a little bit with vocation. He says that a woman, a mother, changing a diaper, which I know you know how to do, is as God-pleasing as a man preaching the gospel in the pulpit. They are equal in God's eyes. Because they're important. Not, mine's not more important than yours. And mothers, yours aren't more important than me. We all have wonderful vocations. Isn't that wonderful? That the Lord has given us so much to do. So many great things. He loves us very much. We are His children. <sighs> Jesus said in our text, Dress, stay dressed for action. If you have the old King James Version, or the new King James Version, it would have said uh, something like, uh, let your loins be girded. Or excuse me, the new King James would let your waist be girded, but the old King James, if you have, grew up on this, let, let your loins be girded. What Jesus is saying is, be prepared to work, to do, to action. Do you know what that looks like? What he's talking about? It's simply this. I'm prepared to work now. I'm prepared to move. I'm prepared to do stuff. Our Lord is telling us, be prepared. When you follow the Lord, you're going to have to gird up your loins. You're going to have to be prepared. You're people of action now because of the actions Christ took for you on the cross. It's beautiful, isn't it? He has now freed you up to do something this world needs more than anything else. Love. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's amazing. In our text today, what's amazing at the end, and I'll say my amen, is Jesus says the master will actually serve the servants. Our Lord has served you on the cross wonderfully. Now live your life in the light of that cross. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus Amen. Please stand.